we're joined by uh, Tomás Ryan, Associate Professor of the School of Biochemistry and Immunology at Trinity College Dublin, and Liam Fanning, Professor uh, at a UCD of immuno, uh, immuno, Immunovirology. Sorry, yeah. uh, Liam. Um, to you first, uh, Tomás Ryan, um, what would you like to see from NEFIT uh, today? It, 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 would you like to see uh, advice to ease restrictions in the coming weeks? Well, Shane, I've been listening to what they've been saying in the past uh, few days, and there's been an awful lot of mixed messaging, not just between Tony Holland and Stephen Donnelly, but Stephen Donnelly said he wants to open up as quickly as possible, but also he wants everyone to stay open. Um, and those two things are, are a little bit different. If you want to open up to stay open, uh, patience is crucial. It's a prediction that they have that vaccination is going to allow things to get to normal by October and November, but we haven't really seen much of the science that's actually going into that. There's been a lot of politics and not much science. I think it would be wonderful if we could release most restrictions before Christmas, but unfortunately, the vaccines, though they're incredibly effective for individuals, are not yet bringing the OR number down for the population. And we have one of the highest OR numbers in Europe. So I think we need to see that happening rather than cross our fingers and hope that it happens. And Shane, I have to, I have to take issue with a couple of things you said. Schools are not safe. And COVID nineteen relatively safe. Design, sorry, relatively no, safe is what I said. And sorry, there is. A, uh, it's not me saying that. Schools are, no, sorry, Shane, sorry, Tomas. No, sorry, hang on a second, not. Tomas. You made a point to me. Let me answer it. There was a report yesterday, and you can you can come back on this. There was a report yesterday from the HSE, and it produced data. This isn't me saying it. That showed that schools are relatively safe. There's two things you need to consider with that. The first is that report showed that there were twice as many children with COVID-19 as a proportion of the population in third term versus second term last year. That's because we opened schools. That doubled the proportion of children with COVID-19. That report is not relevant now. We have never opened schools with this case numbers before. When we had these case numbers before, it was Christmas and we kept schools closed. We have never seen the Delta variant in our schools. And most importantly, we have never opened schools while we were reducing restrictions. Up until now, we protected children by protecting everyone okay. in society. So you want schools Today, to stay no, closed, do you? We, no, I didn't say that. I said that we're protecting society now as individuals with vaccination. There is nothing protecting children and children and schools are vaccine free environments. The government has done nothing to mitigate for this. They have not updated their advice for nearly a year and I don't think that's acceptable. OK, I do want to bring in Liam Fanning, Professor uh, at UCC. Uh, Liam, uh, do, do you agree uh, with Tomas in relation to schools? Well, what I would say about uh, children and schools is that uh, we know from uh, lots of the data that, you know, less than 2% of children infected um, will have symptoms that last longer than eight weeks and that as a population of individuals, they seem to handle this infection far better than any other population. And we also know from the, the ZOE study in England um, where they looked at 1,734 um, children uh, that, you know, the uh, children with other flu-like illnesses can have prolonged symptoms as well. So, you know, this this is about a kind of a sense of perspective and what we can expect children to, uh, you know, and what they need from school. You know, they need their socialisation, they need their schooling. I know um, uh, Tomás is a member of ISAG and that they suggested recently that children be wearing FFP2 masks. I mean, I, I think there has to be a sense of what's practical here and um, what's necessary for children's psychosocial development. And in school is the best place for them. We know that uh, child to child transmission can occur, but it occurs very infrequently. And we know that child transmission to adult uh, can occur as well. Although most of the adult population in schools should be vaccinated, I would nearly say on a personal level that it should be mandatory that teachers should be vaccinated where possible okay. so that the maximum protection within schools is provided to both children and adults. And just before I, I, I bring Tomas back in, uh, Liam, what would you like to see from NEFIT today? Well, I would like to see, you know, kind of a, a realisation of a, a dividend for the population as a whole because we're greater than 90% very soon of the over 18s vaccinated. And we see this electric picnic there. Um, their representative was on uh, primetime last night looking for a change to the, the licensing structure so that they could actually have that. I think, you know, for a fully vaccinated population, um, I'm sorry, over 90%, that electric picnic and those kind of events could occur. Um, we've seen Crow Park. I mean, Crow Park is like kind of, you know, we'll take it that most of those, 80% of those individuals were vaccinated 
vaccinated. So that's like exactly where we're going to be going. We're going to be going with an okay. endemic virus and living with it as a vaccinated population, accepting that it's in the 16th to 29th for the moment, but that's going to shrink shortly. Okay, Liam Fanning, thanks for that. Uh, Tomás Ryan, uh, last word to you. You heard what Liam had to say. We need a sense of what's practical here. Well, lots of countries are taking much better measures than we are in schools. They are practical. We just don't want to be bothered doing them. Liam cited one study which said that 2% of kids get long COVID. That's the most optimistic study. Most studies show it's about 7 to 10% of kids. And if that spreads uncontrolled in our schools, it's going to be a lot of kids. Please look at the USA. They're running out of pediatric ICU beds. They've never seen more hospitalizations in children than at any other point in the pandemic until now. This is not a benign disease in children. Children. It's just less risky than in adults, but a small percentage of a large population is still a large number. We might be lucky, but right now we're not doing anything to mitigate against the risk of the highly okay. transmissible Delta variant spreading in our schools, which are vaccine-free environments. Tomas Ryan and Liam Fanning, uh, thanks to both of you for talking to News Talk Breakfast this morning.